Welcome back everyone to episode 3 of Nub's RPG Wednesday look at Final Fantasy VI. Again, we are looking at the Game Boy Advance version of the game, not the Super Nintendo or any of the other versions. Uh, so if there are some differences to what you remember of the game looking or sounding or playing like, it's because we are not looking at the original, we're looking at the Game Boy Advance version. So anyway, in the last episode, we did pick up our fourth party member in Sabin, and we made our way through Mount Colts, and we're right outside of the Returner's hideout. Uh, again, there's going to be a little bit of dialogue at the very beginning of this while we try to convince Terra to join the Resistance. So let's go ahead and get that started. King Edgar, this way, please. I have no control over this. They're auto moving my character. Now I get to move. Let's see if I can find some items that I can obtain. There we go. Let's see if there's anything good to pick up that I needed. I can pick up some more of those. Again, I haven't had a serious problem with people um, silencing this early. Five tents. We'll get five sleeping bags, but I don't. I'm probably not going to use those much. If I use anything, it's going to be the tents. Uh, ethers are not worth the money that you pay for them, at least this early in the game, because only Terra can use magic, and you're better off just using physical attacks until you get to a scenario where you have to fight a boss. We'll pick up. I don't need a ton of these yet. Four of those. That's fine. There's the inn, which I don't think we have to pay for. Yeah, we get to just nap. We don't have to worry about anything else. I mean, this is the group that we're trying to help defeat the Empire with. Or trying to help defeat the Empire, something like that. Let's go this way. I don't think there's anything else we can do. Maybe there's one more shop somewhere. Oh, what's this? A phoenix down. Nice. Here. Come on, go, go, go. What is up here? Have you spoken with Bannon? No, I haven't. Let's go ahead and do that. Our first save point. Might be a bad idea to save in here. Nothing there. Nothing there. Hello. Hi, Potion. Let's talk to Bannon. Bannon. We brought her to with us. Brought her with us, not to us. <laughs> oh, good lord. I forgot what his hair looked like. Why did they do that? That looks nothing like the guy we're talking to. So this is the girl. The one to whom the Esper responded. Esper? Seems the Empire has complete control over her. Had? Whatever. Carrier pigeons have kept me informed. I also heard that she wiped out 50 Imperial soldiers in mere minutes. No, that's not. Terra! For heaven's sake, Bannon. The girl doesn't remember anything. Hiding from the truth won't change it. Perhaps you've heard this story before. Once, when people were still pure and innocent, there was a box they were told never to open. But someone went and opened it anyway, unleashing all the evils of the world. Pride, envy, greed, wrath, 
gluttony. The only thing that remained in the box was a single ray of light. Hope. Uh -huh. Your power is a gift, not a curse. No matter what happens, you must remember that. You are this world's last ray You are this world's last ray of hope. I keep saying it wrong. Ray of light. Our final hope. Bannon. I've grown weary with the hour. Allow me to rest for a while. And comb my hair. And he walks into a wall. <laughs> I think there's something wrong with that old guy. What about you? What do you think? Vampire stole someone important from me. I've hated it ever since. If no one stands up to the Empire, more people will be left like me. That's why I joined the Returners. But there's no one important in my life. I have no family, no friends. That's not true. And besides, I'm sure there are people who feel you're important to them. Those people are counting on you too. Notice he didn't say he feels or she's important. He said, someone. Mm, this is the part where I have to go meet with a bunch of different people who are all going to tell me their reason for joining the resistance so that I can decide on my own if I want to. Hello. Phoenix down. Air knife. Which you should give to Locke. Knight's Code, so we got another one. Antidote. Ether. Please have the courage to join us in our battle. And take all these items that we had lying around. I mean, we don't need them, I think. Hello, Secret Passage. That's why it pays to search. White Cape. I think this improves your evasion ability. I also think it's a relic. No, it prevents imp and silence. Alright, so get rid of that. She can cure herself with Poisona. Give her the white cape. She can keep darkness. That's a good idea. Or keep the item that prevents darkness. That's a good idea. I don't think there's another passage for her to sneak down. Peek out. And let's go look around a little bit more. We gotta go find Sabin and Edgar and find out why they joined. We're a small organization, but we've been gaining more and more sympathizers around the world. Freedom is almost within our grasp. Um... Yeah, no, it's not. It's not. Sorry, dude. You're completely and utterly buggered very soon. The Empire is snuffing out returners wherever it finds them. We must find a way to strike back before it's too late. I don't know what to tell you, but I do know that I trust my brother completely. He's always thought of my needs before his own, ever since we were little. I think you should trust him, too. But don't tell him I said that. He'll turn red as a tomato. And let's check down here. Nope, he's not in here. Gotta find Edgar before we can move the story. It's not easy asking so much of you. Oh, sorry, I'm doing the wrong voice. And if we force our ideas on you, we're no different from the Empire. So, who want you to decide for yourself? Yes, yes, I know. Now we're gonna save again. I don't need to, but we will anyway, because I think we're about to get to the critical choice 
which I think we gotta go find Bannon in his bedroom to start that. It's right here. Or not. I don't know. Yada, 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 yada. I might need to just go take another nap and that'll trigger it. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's head back to the inn and crash and see if that gives me the option to advance the story. head back up to Bannon's main room. I don't know if it's his only room. Okay, so nothing changed there. Eh. Maybe I can just leave now? I'm gonna talk to the guy at the front door and see if they let me walk out. Bannon? Yeah, there we go. He went outside just a moment ago. Alright, so here is the critical juncture for how you want the game to advance. Technically, what you're going to answer when you get asked the, the next question doesn't affect the story, but it does affect the item you get as a result. So let's look at what he says. Have you made your decision? Will you become our last ray of hope? If you say yes, which, you know, story-wise, that is the, the answer you want to say is, yeah, we're going to join the resistance. You get the gauntlet. What the gauntlet does is when you put it on, it makes you hold whatever weapon that your character has equipped with both hands and increases the amount of damage you do by 50%. The unfortunate thing is you have to get rid of the shield that you're holding so you lose some defense to increase your attack power, which is okay. However, if you say no here, you'll actually go back into the Returner hideout and someone will give you the Genji Glove. The Genji Glove allows you to hold a weapon in each hand, so you get two attacks when you hit the enemy. Those count for full damage. So the Genji Glove is by far the better option of the two. So, as dumb as it is, if you say no, you're actually rewarded with a better item than agreeing to join the Returners. However, you get to answer this question three different times. So, we're going to say no. I see. And then we're going to go back up here and find whoever has the Genji Glove. I don't know who it is. We'll talk to everyone. I understand your apprehension, but too many innocent lives are being lost to the Empire while we stand here and do nothing. Please, lend us your strength. There we go. This relic will help keep you safe. Bing! We need your help. So the person I think I'm going to give the Genji Glove to is Sabin, and the reason for that is he can only equip light shields. He can't use the heavier gear that most other characters get. And I think he benefits the most from having the ability to hit twice. Now, you could, in theory, also give it to, say, Locke. Although you want him stealing if he can, because that means getting more items that you don't have to pay for, including some that are very rare and hard to buy or find more of. You could give it to Terra, although she can use magic and... At some point, it actually becomes a better option for her to use magic as opposed to just doing standard attacks. And in the case of Edgar, he should be using tools nonstop. That is his main means of attack. So for the time being, I think it's better that Ed, uh, Sabin gets the Genji Glove. And I think... 
think we can go back outside and say we've changed our mind. I don't know if anyone else's uh, answers here will change. I doubt it. Yeah, it's not changing anything. Now, actually, if you say no three times, I think you actually get a different outcome for the story. But we're not going to do that. As silly as that is. Let's just go ahead and say yes, we'll join. Have you made your decision? Will you become our last ray of hope? Yes, crazy old man with wild hair. I'll help you. Really? You will? <laughs> but I'm scared. We'll succeed if we all work together. Never give up hope. I have a plan. Would you please gather everyone together? Well then, we all know that the Gestalian Empire is using its Magitek power to wage war. The question is, where did they get that power? I had Locke dig around for information. It seems the Empire has been gathering scholars from around the world to study espers. Narsha's esper was also the reason for the Empire Im Imperial assault there. I Imperial. <laughs> I'll get it right. Are you saying there's some kind of connection between Espers and Magitek? Espers and Magitek. Only one possible link comes to mind. You don't mean... The War of the Magi. No! That's impossible! Rawr, rabble, rabble, rabble. My grandma used to tell me bedtime stories about magical machines. Those stories were true? You're saying we're on the verge of a second war of the Magi? It's only a guess. The war took place a thousand years ago, and every historian has a different theory. But one theory says that energy drained from espers was used to power machines, and that ordinary humans were also infused with that same energy. So, that's what Magitek power is. If we're going to fight Magitek enemies, we need Magitek weapons of our own. No, that would bring about another War of the Magi. Then what do you propose? I was wondering if we might not be able to have a chat with an Esper. With an Esper? It's risky. But if that Esper reacted to Terra before, if we could get it to react to her again, we just might be able to wake it up. Do you really think that would work? I can't say for sure, but I believe it's our best shot. Of course, we can't do anything without Terra's help. Terra! I'll do it. Not entirely sure I understand the plan, but what the hey? This sounds like it'll be fun. What was that? That noise just now. We're being attacked. Bannon, sir. Uh. South Figaro. What's wrong? What happened? The, the Empire's taken South Figaro. They're headed this way. So they found us. We haven't a moment to lose. Lock. I know. Someone has to sneak into South Figaro to slow down the enemy, right? This is right up your alley. We're counting on you. Terra, wait for me. I won't be gone long. And watch out for a certain lecherous young king who shall remain nameless. Guy moves in like a hawk. Lock. 
Edgar. Old habits die hard, eh? What about us? We can escape down the Leth River, Lath, and make our way to Narsh. I'm curious about that Esper they found in the mines. Very well. I'll ready the raft by the back entrance. It's risky, but we don't have much of a choice at this point. It's not safe here. Come with us to Narsh. It could be a chance for you to gain a better understanding of your abilities. We've no time to dilly-dally. Let's make for Narsh. And... I think we get forced right into it. Yeah, I don't even know if we can go back. Sorry, a lot of voice changes. I need a little water to soothe my throat. It's going to get worse the more voices that I have to start doing. All right, so if we have any equipment to change... Yeah, you can't do anything with Bannon. You have to do it now because you will not have a choice later. And I think the relics are all set. Not a whole lot else we can do. Uh, we can give... Sabin the Genji Glove. See, we get, get a little bit of... Oh, you know what? He doesn't even have another pair of knuckles yet. Shoot. All right, so let's... let's uh... Oh, no. Relics. Let's switch that with a knight's code for now. And once we get a second pair of claws, we'll give them to him. Here we go. This raft will carry us to Narsh. Hop aboard the raft? Yep. Head toward... Head towards Narsh. Ah, I keep getting tongue-tied. While protecting Bannon at all costs. If Bannon falls in battle, the journey's over. Well, here's good news. Uh, Bannon has the ability to quote-unquote pray, and praying gives you health back. So don't even bother using him to fight. Just heal non-stop. Easy as that. Uh, we're gonna go left, I think, is the right way. So we'll find out in a second here. I always thought when you get blinded in this game, it looks like you're just wearing a pair of sunglasses. Not sure what the message is supposed to be there. We can't even look at the inventory while you're traveling. Your only option is get to a cave where you can get off the raft and save. And that's where you can actually change your uh, equipment or heal. So we'll use the eye drops on poor Bannon there. Although I don't think you can miss with praying. I think it works no matter what. We'll do our first save file in the cave. I believe the enemies in this area can be missed if you're trying to fill out your rage list, but I don't know that for certain. 
I think there's a couple of areas in the game where you have to fight every enemy, and if you don't, you won't be able to find them again anywhere else. I'm gonna try the aura cannon. I got it! Hooray! See how big of a difference it makes? A little bit more, a little bit more damage than the pummel. All right, I believe the answer for this one is also left. Not 100% certain. I see a cave, that's usually a good sign. I think I botched that. Oh, I got it! Hey! Yeah, the, the blitzes where you have to roll the, the D-pad are going to be a little bit tricky because of how stiff the D-pad is on the Retron controllers. And it's going to be a lot easier for me to just do the ones where you press like left, right, left or up, down or anything like that. And I have no idea how much of a nightmare uh, the Phantom or Bum Rush is going to be. All right, I think once we get on the raft here, we start our boss fight with a recurring character that we're going to see a bunch in the game here. I have no idea what voice I'm going to go for with this guy. I think I botched the aura cannon again. So I'll find out. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I should just stick with the uh, pummel move. It does a little more damage, but I, or a little less damage, but I think it's a safer option for guaranteeing a hit. Until we get to the point where I can do fire dance or whatever the re uh, translated version of his bum rush attack where he or his uh, blitz attack where he just does like a hit all with fire, whatever that's called. Because that's going to be one I have to be able to do regularly to make him really effective. And it's not that far away. I believe when you get the scenario where you can play as Sabin, he actually can learn it. It's a, a pretty early uh, blitz that he learns. It's like the very next one. All right, what are we doing for voice for Ultros? Hmm. I'm thinking putty, like the putties from uh, Power Rangers. <laughs> hey, what have we got here? <laughs> You're up the creek without a paddle. Does that make me a bad octopus? Yeah, just keep healing with him. I don't think we have lightning. That would be a good spell to use here, but we'll use fire to see if that does anything. Yoach! Seafood soup is not on the menu. Oh, that's one tasty morsel. I'd love to get my tentacles around her. Slurp. <laughs> Damn, that's a hard hit. Good thing Bannon's there just to do healing nonstop. Ouch! Seafood soup is definitely not on the menu. Ah, uh -huh, you missed. Yeah, we're rocking his world. Muscle heads hate him. I'm not going to keep saying that. Give me some new dialogue, man. I 
think it's over. Sploosh, blub blub. I guess it got the point? I wouldn't bet on it. It's probably just hiding down there. Ew! Something stuck to my leg. Tara, get away from there. We should be all right now. A darn freak. I'm gonna smash it with a blitz. No, Saban! Out of my way, Edgar. And the party split. <laughs> Well, he always has been a bit rash. Saban. Oh, he'll be fine. Are you sure, Bannon? Sir? You're his brother. You should know better than any of us. Any second now, I'll flop back up onto the raft, right as rain. Whaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
This is the easiest one. I mean, not only is it the group with the most people right out of the bat, but it also has the guy who can hit everyone and the guy who can heal everyone. This is without a doubt the easiest of the three scenarios. I think that wing attack that the dragon does is kind of like a bleed move where you don't quite get poisoned, but you do take damage over time. But it doesn't last outside of battle, which is why I would say instead of being poisoned, it's a bleed move. And although I didn't think to do it, I probably would have been better off putting Bannon in the back row the first chance I got. He's not going to fight. He's just going to heal. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that right now. Bump. Also, at this point, I don't think Terra is the leader. So we'll swap in Edgar as the leader of the group. Not that she can't be a leader. It's just that she's still following the lead of everyone else at this point in the story. So we're here at Narsh. I mean, it's that fast. Now, if you need health, you can still go back in here and still go to the bucket and tank up. Now, this is what happens if you try to go in the main gate. You, you're that Imperial officer from before. Please, I can explain. Get out of here now, or you'll regret it. Ah, Bannon. Let's not get hasty here. I'm King Edgar of Figaro. Liar. I'm surprised I didn't try to kidnap her right then and there, or grab her. My goodness. And that, my friends, is why I can't stand men. It's like they don't even have ears. I'm sorry. This It's all my fault. All right, so that is why we have to take the back route. Just going right back where we came from when we were with Locke. When Locke first rescued me, he came out of the mines right around here. He fiddled with something. Yes, he told me. Twist this knob like so and... There's an item in this cave that you would think is a good idea to pick up when you find it. It is something you absolutely should leave until later in the game. And I'll see if I can't figure it out. If I accidentally pick it up, so be it. I think we're probably not going to have a hard time getting through the cave here because these are still the enemies that we fought on the way out at the very beginning of the game, so we should be well leveled up at past them at this point. No challenge in beating any of them. Nope, can't go that way. Can't go that way. Eventually, we do get the chance to actually go around Narsh a little bit, but it's going to be a while before we get to that point.
Oh, I guess they did upgrade the enemies there. Because Wild Rat and Valior were not the enemies we fought earlier. Why are they leveling Bannon? Bannon absolutely not going to be a part of the group. Eventually, he does, I think, get killed. So you. Yeah, I am very convinced that giving uh, Edgar there that, what was it, the Gigas Glove was the right call because of his ability to hit everyone, which is just, it's a, a game changer early on. Instead of relying on the ability to fight, oh, we gotta follow this. All right, got all that? If you fall off the path, you actually have to do a fight. All right, let's see if I botch it. Yeah, I already botched. Yep. <laughs> Actually, I think for purposes of filling out the rage list, this is a good choice anyway, just to fight these guys to make sure that you can learn them. With only a handful of exceptions, pretty much every enemy in this game you can learn as a rage. I had to go left there. Yeah, oops. All right, I think I got it. Which means I'm going to botch. Ready? Watch. This way, this way, this way, down, over, up, over, up, we're done. So there's a cave, I think I just walked past it, that leads to where all the Moogles hang out. And in that cave should be an item that you can pick up now, and it'll give you a, a fairly useful weapon. Or if you leave it, when you come back to this area later in the game, it becomes a completely different and far more useful item. So let's see if I am in the right spot up here. This is where we had the real-time strategy battles, where we had a plot where we were placing our Moogles. Yep, here we go. So there is an item back here. This right here. If you pick it up now, you get the Rune Blade. And what that does is it makes your character use some of their magic to do a critical hit. If you leave it for later in the game, it actually transforms into a ribbon. And ribbons, historically in Final Fantasy games, prevent you from taking any status ailment effects when an enemy attacks you. So that is an incredibly important item to pick up when you find them. Because it's not something you can usually buy, and there are limited numbers of them in the game. So the one that you want to talk to is this guy right here. This is um, Mog, I think. But I don't think he actually does anything until later when all the other groups show up, and then I think he actually joins you. Also, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, underneath where he's standing is an item later that you can pick up, the Moogle Charm. So, just to retrace, that's where we went in, and we walked out the other end, and I don't think you can go back in that way. If 
very low level enemy still at this point. Save point. Save. Believe it or not, we're actually almost done with this scenario. Once we get out of the caves and make our way back to the hut and talk to the guy that saved Terra earlier, it's over. It's that fast. This way, go down, and we gotta go talk to the guy, and then we're done. There he is. Bannon, King Edgar, oh, and Terra, too. Arvis, how do things stand here in Narsh? Same as always, the town's neutral. I've tried to convince them to side with the returners, but it's no use. Of course, maybe with you and the King of Figaro here. How are the townspeople? Everyone's a little on edge since the Esper was discovered. We believe Taro may be able to help us get answers to our questions about the Esper. Well, the townspeople are still quite curious about it as well. If we approach them in the right way, there's a good chance they'll agree to let her see it. That Esper is either going to save us or dig us an early grave. And there you go. That's it. So now we have the option between Locke or Sabin. We're going to start the Locke one. We're probably not going to finish it before the end of this episode, but we will go ahead and get him moving. Locke has worked hard to stymie the efforts of the Imperial troops in South Figaro, but now he is now he desperately needs to escape. So this one can be a little bit confusing because there's a lot of swapping between outfits to try to move around town. Uh, you have to choose the right one to get past certain areas. Damn it. Gotta get to Narsh on the fly. Rich people's homes always have secret passages. You just have to search until you find a place where you can feel a draft. Or let the people inside the house tell you there's a draft. <laughs> right, we don't need that yet. But we will be back there eventually. And no, Shadow's not here anymore. He moved on. I don't think there's random encounters. There are enemies you have to fight. And possibly when you get into the basement, you might have a fight or two you have to contend with. But for the most part, it's just uh, fighting people you can see on screen. All right, so you have to bring him cider as part of getting out of here. I don't remember where it is. We'll find it eventually. All right, so I can only get through that passage as a merchant. The only way to get into a merchant outfit is to find one that's walking around and they'll get upset that you bug them and pick a fight and then you have to steal from them because you're stealing their clothing, I guess. Uh, stay away from those armed soldiers. They'll kill you just for talking to them. And that guy right there up in the corner is who we got to talk to. We'll buy five of these. And we'll buy six of these. Phoenix Downs, let's buy three. Just buy little little bits and bites of them. Buy three tents, and we should be fine for now.
You're that infamous thief, Locke, aren't you? Yeah. Now that was just plain rude. I'm a treasure hunter, and don't you forget it. And now we have to fight him for whatever reason, but the key here is steal from him. If it says couldn't steal, you don't succeed. The only time you can get his outfit is if you succeed in your steal. Ouch! There we go. You also get some good items from these guys, too. Stole his clothes, too. Here we go. That's how I dress. I just spin in a circle. They're a little tight. The price was right. And this guy's gonna run away. Ugh. <laughs> I like that his his character changes from merchant to birthday suit. Why do I always have to go and open my mouth? So now we can go past the, the kid down in the basement. I think he had a better item that he could put on. Oh, wow, look at that. He has nothing equipped. All right, so... We want to put on the air knife. And in fact... I think everyone is unequipped when you start the next scenario, so... We're going to give him the Genji glove. And... Um... Jeweled ring, I don't know if anyone's going to try to petrify you at this point. But they'll give him the air knife and the mangosh, so he has an increased chance to de to defend or block attacks if anyone does try to hit him. Although he does lose a little bit of defense by not getting a shield. So uh, once we get to a point where we're out of the town, I may take the Genji glove back off so that we can give it to Sabin. Although I might not even do that. I might just leave it with Locke. I'm not 100% on that yet. Let's just make some progress and we'll figure it out. Yeah, 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 whatever. Get out of the way. Stop walking in front of me. What do you got? This is just another... Okay. Never mind. Moving on. Hup, hup, hup. Get through the door. I'm not buying anything. Okay, he's not buying anything. Very important to note. Let's go back in here. Go downstairs. Yada, yada, yada. You're a merchant, right? Okay, go ahead. Let's see if we can't find that cider. fight that guy if he can't outright kill you he's going to force you back to the other side so you don't want to talk to him if you can avoid it and I don't think anything's changed with the weapon and armor shop yeah same, same equipment so nothing to do there probably nothing to do with the weapon shop either soldiers in the Imper imperial armor are there yeah. Soldiers in the Imperial Army have different ranks. I can speak. The ones in green are the low-ranking grunts. Those low-ranking soldiers in green love to start fights, even though they never win. They're so slow, you could steal the clothes right off their backs. Uh, okay. Thanks. I think we might want to buy another one of these. Just saying, might need a weapon in the near future. I think we want to switch to this guy. So we got past where we wanted to go. And now we need to be able to move around as a soldier. What are you doing here? Scram! Why, I oughta. And a yoink. Stole his clothes, too. Here we go. They're a bit too large, but he didn't charge. 
<laughs> Alright, now I should be able to get into areas where there might be some people standing around. Like this guy right here. Get back to your post. See? Alright, well, he won't move, but I think this guy will? That idiot, Kefka, is about to invade Narsh. Oh, well, I didn't catch all that. Oh, of course I know better than call him that to his face. Come on, move. Oh, man. Oh, okay. I can go this way. But can I go that way? That's where I need to go. Yes, here we go. Oh, is my shift up already? Great. I'm going to take a break. Yep, you do that, buddy. I can't go in here. Detach them, it should be making its way towards Narsh as we speak. We'll be linking up with them soon. And I can go down here. I don't know what we need back this way. I think there's a way to move around in the pub. Try the pub. Now, instead of normal patrons, it's nothing but the soldiers. Oh, no. I'm late for my shift guarding the underground passage to the mansion. Ah, <laughs> well. Better never than late. Um, yeah, sure. It's a good way to get fired. Seems her famous lady general turned traitor. I heard they have her locked up somewhere in this town. I heard there are two tunnels beneath the northern mansion. One leads to another house, and the other leads out of town. Come on, talk to me. I want you to talk. Jerk. Okay. All right, here's another merchant if you need to swap back. And how's my health? Oh, I'm fine. It would not be worth spending money to get nine hit points back when I could just burn a potion and then steal another one later. Uh, okay, so that didn't do what I was hoping for. We'll buy a pair of these, but I don't think I'm ever going to use them. So where did that get me? I need to get in this building up here. That's where the passage was. So I, maybe I need to be a merchant? Maybe? We'll try that. If I'm wrong, there's another soldier wandering around I can steal the outfit from. So, terribly sorry, I just ran out of everything I had to sell. Lie to me with you, will you? Let's go. Alright, steal from him. Got his hat again. Show you. I like that you don't actually get any experience when they run away like that. Why do I always have to go and open my mouth? Except I see him wearing the clothing that I supposedly stole, so that makes no sense. Oops. <laughs> All right, let's see if this will get us into the house. I'm not buying anything. Oh, shoot. I was hoping that would do it. Mm. Where else can I go? Nothing in the pub I can do. Uh-oh. Oh, I shouldn't have done this! Oh, wow, they hit hard. 
I should probably just run. <laughs> Get out of the fight. See ya. Don't do that. Don't do that. Let's get back up here. Can't get past these guys. Um, can't get past him. Is there a door here? There is. And that was how I got here in the first place, so I'm not any better off. I think I have to find the cider and give it to the old man, but I don't remember where it is. Like, I feel like I, I had to trade it with somebody. But I'm blanking up. Maybe it's in the pub? We'll try that. You talk to me now. Come on. Wait a minute. What was this? Wait. This might be it. Yep. There we go. Just keep doing that until they tell me I can steal something. No change in the outfit. Yoink. Let's head back to the old man. Give it to him, see what he does for me. I would like to get to the next character, and then maybe that's where we're going to stop for this episode. down here, and here we go. Ah, cider! Glug, glug. Hmm? Secret passage? Well, yes, there is a tunnel from here to the mansion in the north end of town. Go downstairs and tell my grandson the password. It's, um... I, I forget. The password is the mayor. <laughs> the password is... Rosebud. Can't fool me. I know you're an Imperial spy. I don't know what just happened. Oh, crap. They threw me out. It's, I think it's courage. Oh, nope. That's not it. We need to go find another merchant. There's going to be one in here. We got to go back down and find the item shops that were up here. Pick a fight with him. Yada, yada, yada. Hurry up. At least I got my health back by getting kicked out of that kid's house. I'm going to have plenty of plumed hats to either use or sell. Uh, 
All right, so we're gonna go with the answer that probably should have been the right one all along, which is courage. There we go. Thanks, kid. By the way, I was an imposter. <laughs> See ya. checked all of these, but I want to check them again. Alright, we're here. I'm going to find that drafty passage behind the bookcase. Imperial troops have turned this house into their headquarters. Now you notice the music cut out because they're going to cue up a little bit of wind sound when you go upstairs. Thanks to our inside informant, this house fell with almost no resistance. And I won't even let you leave out the front door. Let's just go upstairs. Whoop. So two doors. The one we want is on the left, but we'll go in here first. Ah, these kids are driving me nuts. Can't they keep quiet for two minutes? And I don't think they do anything new. Wind the clock, wind the clock. And she's talking about how there's a clock you can do something to to open a passage, which we'll probably find somewhere near here. Uh, what have I done? I betrayed my town to the Empire. All I could think of was the money. Oh, listen to that. You hear a little bit of wind. So technically, we could have gone down here and explored a little bit earlier when we were in town with the, the whole group. And there are a couple of items down here that I could have gotten, but you didn't have to do it. And they're, they're nice additions, but not necessary. Yeah, remove the disguise. We don't need it anymore. They forced me to do that. I didn't have a choice. I know I've seen her before. Wait a second. She's one of the Empire's generals. And this is a part that got edited. This is what happens to traitors. Now, normally after you hit the A button, she would get smacked. Instead, I think they just yell at her. Well, it looks like they just cut everything there. A Magitech Knight forged by the Empire and tempered in battle. None have ever truly known the woman beneath the General's guise. Celeste. So the mighty Celeste has fallen. Pop, 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 pop. Not as far as those... Okay, wait. I gotta come up with a voice for her. She's probably like a, a nice falsetto. Because she's a singer. So I gotta go high with this. Not as far as those who use their strength to oppress the weak. Quiet. Kafka's planning to poison every last man... Woman and child in the kingdom of Doma. Shut up. Huh. Run that mouth of yours while you still can. Your execution's tomorrow. Keep a close eye on her. Yes, sir. I can't stand... I can stand guard for days without sleep. Then falls asleep immediately. See, that doesn't make sense when you take out the part where she's getting hit. Now she seems like she just gave up on life. Eh, whatever. Which is funny because, of course, later in the game, she gives up on life. <laughs> well, 
if you don't do it the right way, she gives up on life. All right, so we're going to save here, and I think we're going to go ahead and stop for this episode. Now, we could advance, but they give you a convenient spot to save right there. And also, we've already eclipsed the one hour mark for this particular episode. So we made very good progress. We finished up in the Returner hideout, decided to say no to joining so that we could get the nice Genji glove. Uh, took our trip down the river, fought the, the goofy uh, octopus man, Altros, split up the group into three parties and finished the first one, the short and easy one involving Edgar, Terra, and Bannon. And we made about half of the necessary progress to finish up the one for Locke. Uh, and then in the next episode, we'll probably wrap that up in, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Depending on how long it takes to get through the cave, they have to go through. And then in the uh, rest of that episode, we'll probably spend it just trying to get Saban through what he has to go through because he has a very long journey to get back to the main group. So that's going to take up most of the next episode and probably the one after that as well. But that's going to do it for episode three of our extended look at Final Fantasy VI. As always, I do appreciate each of you watching and I will see you next time.